Welcome gamers! I hope you are new to my channel. If you're not, welcome back. <laughs> this is Book of Catherine. So, we're going to discuss Gamergate, which you probably think is about feminism if you've actually read Wikipedia, the biggest astroturfing, aka paid media site on the internet. If you don't know what I'm talking about, just listen to Cheryl Atkinson, who left the media because everything was so paid. There was no room for actual journalism. There's a few books and journals out on it, so just be aware of that. So, just paid, 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 paid. So, let's talk about what Gamergate actually is. Zoe Quinn, the whole nine yards. People were saying, gee, it seems like the press and the media all of a sudden sided with Zoe Quinn and all the women. It seems to be unfair. They seem to be really on the side of the women in this thing and the PC magazines and defending that kind of culture. And if you guys aren't in the gaming world, then it's okay. Basically, Zoe Quinn's boyfriend, both of them in the gaming world, went, had a thing. Her boyfriend went online, wrote a big blog, which is his right, free speech, and said... This girl just like screws with my head. Like she's been screwing other people and she's screwing with my head and she's just da 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 da. And then other men were like, yeah, this happens to me too, blah, blah, blah. And then they said a huge thing happened against her. And that became Gamergate. And now they say it's a big women's harassment movement when in reality, this woman came after him first and did a ton, ton, ton of things to him. Let's talk about why. Let's talk about why. It was a huge attack against 4chan and Reddit communities and everything like that. Let's just talk, shall we? Let's just talk about, and let's, let's, let's be really honest. I mean, there is a reason for these men on Reddit and 4chan to be exhausted. I mean, look at how Twitch handles women. Twitch handles women. The women say they want to be treated equally, but Twitch, the platform Twitch, does not treat women the same way that they treat men. They ban men immediately, immediately for breaking any of their rules or content, but the woman can break anything, anything at all, anything at all. I could probably drop out something right here, and Twitch would leave it back on. Why? Because, you know, they just profit, you know? But it's not fair, and it totally does something to the inequality, and then the girls end up thinking, and it inflates the ego, and then they end up violating other rules and violating other codes of conduct, and then they start violating other users. And when the other users get upset, they're just kind of like, why are you mad at me? Why are you mad at me? And it's because they violated other rules and conduct and nothing happened to them there. And so I'm just kind of like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And so let's talk about what really was going on with Gamergate. The real inside scoop and why it applies to you if you're a gamer and why it applies to you if you're not. And why, quite frankly, it applies to the whole freaking universe on this planet. That is, if you are involved in Twitter. So Zoe Quinn, it turns out, was actually not just a girlfriend. Oh, no, no, no. Zoe Quinn was... Ah, she was the most precious commodity on this planet. Oh, she wasn't just a woman. No, 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 no. If you are going to go out and attack anyone, anyone at all, publicly... The last person, the last person you should have done was Zoe Quinn. The last. The last. You could have attacked Barack Obama. Yeah, you would have been thrown in jail like, you know, Dinesh D'Souza was. All right, that's just fine. You know, you could have attacked John McCain. That's just fine. You could have attacked a little six-year-old girl. Just fine. Not Zoe Quinn. Not Zoe Quinn. She's the most precious commodity. You could probably even go after a sheik. Not Zoe Quinn. Why? Zoe Quinn is the tent pole that holds all the world's dictators up. And when that guy attacked her, he was attacking the tent pole. That holds all the UN's dictators, the entire money, the entire banking system, the entire corporate Monsanto, Bayer, all of them. When that guy wrote about his girlfriend, he just thought he was writing a blog about a girlfriend. Oh, no, no, no. And you're probably wondering, like, what? Did she just... Did? No, 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 no. No, no, it had nothing to do with dating. At all. 
at all. It had to do with her job, her real job. Her job with a company called Crash Override Networks, a branch of Twitter. You know, if any of you actually bothered to watch those Project Veritas videos that were under cover of Twitter, if you were not trying to listen for the free speech violations, if you were actually listening and trying to learn about the company of Twitter and say, what does this teach me about Twitter, period? Because Project Veritas went in saying, these are what we suspect about Twitter. So, all right. We think that they are shutting down conservative speech. All right, are they? And they went in and they listened and then they edited the tapes. Well, they didn't edit the tapes. They put as much out. They even put out extra or whatever. They edited the tapes out for the drinking games. All right, big deal, right? So they put out all these hours of tapes. But the thing is, is that when they did the commentary on them, when they edited the tapes and actually made commentary on them, what they commented on or how it suppressed the free speech of conservatives. They hammered down the shadow banning. That's not what I heard. Because, heck, I'm an independent. I didn't even listen to anything in politics until this year, and it came out at the beginning of this year. No, I've had other Twitter accounts because I was a businesswoman. I was a businesswoman, and I was an author, so I did other things not involved in politics, involved in the arts, involved in makeup. I did other things, but I had experienced things that Twitter was talking about. And so when I listened to those tapes, I heard something very, very, very different. Things about rooms full of hundreds of people. And then I heard Cheryl Atkinson on that video I just shared with you saying to each one of those people belongs five to 100 fake Twitter accounts. And then out comes Crash Override Networks. More information about it. Zoe Quinn, Crash Override Networks. It says it's an anti-online harassment group. Have you noticed something about things in the media? What do the newest Project Veritas videos just show us? The media says one thing, but behind closed doors, they're actually doing the opposite. They're actually planning the opposite. George Soros calls his open society open. We're the open society. Try to get in. They're the most closed society. You can't find out anything about them. You try to interview any of them, blank face, no, 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 no. They don't answer any of the public requests. It's the most closed society, secretive society there is. When you try, anyone comes on for an interview, just happened two days ago. Someone said the word George Soros on the air and they got banned from the network. <laughs> two, there's only two other people who went after George Soros. Both of them got dropped from the network, even though they were the second, first and second highest rated on those networks. Both touched George Soros, dropped. Oh, that's an open society, all right. Very, very open. So what did we learn about Crash Networks? Little interview with Candace Owens and how she got involved in politics. And maybe it's just because I'm sick in bed most of the day and I just have way too much time to kill on my hands, but I actually listened to the long version, where she had three hours to talk. And luckily, it's at the very beginning, so when I include the link right here, boom, it'll be right at the beginning, and you'll be able to find it. And she talks about her interaction with Zoe Quinn. Oh, yeah. You didn't know that? Zoe Quinn and Candace Owens. Bing. And that's when I learned what Crash Override was really, and Gamergate was really about. This is what really happened. When Zoe Quinn went to court, Candace Owens was making an anti-bullying app. She put it up on Crowdfunder. 
She put it up on a crowdfunding window, website, everything like that. And so Zoe Queen came to her and was like, yeah, I want anti-bullying. But really, she was just finding out what it actually was and what it did. And Candace hadn't even built the app yet. Hadn't even built the app yet. Right? Then when it was about to go up, Zoe was like, you've got to stop it. You've got to drop the whole thing, right? You've got to drop the whole thing. Long story short, you can go watch the interview for yourself. Long story short, we find out that Crash Override Networks is not an anti-bullying group that works with Twitter, in Twitter, massive group of hundreds, room filled with hundreds of people looking at, you know, bleep pics all day. What do you think that group was doing? They didn't go down that line of questioning very much, did they? That group of people going through bleep pics all day, what do you think they're doing? That's the harassment group that actually goes out and harasses people as part of their job to threat and intimidate and take down anyone who goes against certain political parties certain businesses. So if you threaten, let's say Amazon, if you have a product that threatens, let's say Sephora, if you have anything that goes against, let's say, I don't know, Senator Feinstein. Like I know for me, for me, I knew what it was because I, I did Macy's. Like that's how I was paying attention when I listened to Twitter. Like, you know, cause boom, I was shadow banned the moment I did Macy's filter. Boom. Like, I got shadow banned the moment I tweeted about Macy's. Big mistake. Big mistake for my Twitter account. Because I actually said something about Macy's. I was like, oh, this is this. And then the next time, the next time, I was like, okay, that's really weird. My Twitter account's asking weird. A few years later, I did something about Mac. And I was like, by the way, Mac packaging. Here's what they advertised. And then here is how the actual product came out. And I saw everybody. This is how the product came out. Boom. Shadow banned. You know, like this consistent thing. Well, thank goodness I didn't actually try to do a new product like Candace did. Well, Candace's product would have actually unmasked all of these accounts that Zoe was one of these little guys sitting behind the seat. And what did all these hundreds of people do? They had basically skins like you guys do in gaming. And all these guys are gamers. And how do we have proof for this? We have proofs because when Zoe actually went to court, these documents came out and she actually leaked these documents. She actually got upset because Twitter kind of left her high and dry and she got upset and she kind of went off kilter, kind of like the guy said she was, a little bit nuts. And she was stupid enough to try and threaten Twitter by actually taking some of the logs from behind crash override networks and giving them out. And it got leaked to the internet and they wiped all the links. All the links are broken, except for the one I found. And you can find those in the description box. And you can find them chattering about all the people they take down from changing Patreon's terms of service, from getting senators to do this, from taking down old veterans and how funny it is. And there's even Twitter logs of all their fake things and what they do with it. And that's what Zoe Quinn is. Because when you control the narrative on Twitter, when you create the world, and in short, when Zoe Quinn is literally the creator of the Matrix, she's the tentpole. And the Matrix supports the global... 1% and their money because they're the only ones that can afford to hire Twitter. Why do you think the Prince of Saudi Arabia bought in at the very beginning? If you look into Twitter's history, you'll find out that that's exactly what the owner of Twitter is. It's not Jack Dorsey. Oh, no, no. And the guy who created Twitter, he's always been an illusionist. He's the guy who created Blogger. And when he built Blogger, what did he do before he sold it to Google? He created the illusion that everything was going great at, Google, at Blogger. He created it up. He built it up. He told everything was going great. And then he started saying, you know, I think things are going downhill a little bit. I think things are great. And he laid everyone off and a month later sold it to Google. Shafted everyone out of their work. That's a big code in Silicon Valley. And you gamers know what I'm talking about. But that's a big thing for developers in Silicon Valley. He created an illusion that Blogger wasn't doing well. 
while on the other side, he was creating the real numbers for Google, saying this is how well Blogger is doing. And all the people working at Blogger were like, how can we be doing that poorly? Blogger just took off. Oh, no, no, that's what this guy did. He created an illusion to fire everyone so that he got all the profits from Blogger. That's what this guy does. He makes illusions. And his number one illusion today is making you think that Jack Dorsey is the face and owner of Google when it's always been him. And the number two guy is a prince from Saudi Arabia where before a sports event, what do they do? They don't bring out cheerleaders. They cut off an infidel's head. What's an infidel? A Christian, a Jew, a gay or someone who committed the ultimate sin, leaving Islam. You wonder why there's no free speech on Twitter? Maybe you should look into what blasphemy laws are and ask yourself, why is it you can say anything you want on Twitter and show anything you want on Twitter and never get banned? Unless it has to do with America or Christianity, or Judaism. Or leaving Islam. Look up ex-Muslims on Twitter and see how often they get banned and how often their testimonies of abuse and suffering are marked sensitive content by Twitter. Just a story of escaping the state of Islam. Just a story. But not porn. Oh, no, 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 no. So get the real story on Gamergate. That's why it was shut down by the press. Because Zoe Quinn worked for Crash Override Networks, aka Twitter, the tent pole that holds up the 1% in society. The Democrats, the Liberals, Silicon Valley, Amazon, everyone. The media, Hollywood, the monopolies of the world, the UN. The UN is all dictatorships. Go ahead, watch the videos on UN Watch. Watch them. All totalitarian dictatorships. Ton of oil money. A ton of billionaire Chinese money. Because in China... There are 5,000 billionaires, but you'll never hear about that because Zoe Quinn and her minions take out everyone. They shadow ban it all. They filter it all out. And what Zoe Quinn and her do, people do as Twitter creates millions of filters that filter all, all of Twitter's pretty much 250 million users off all of our voices off, shadow bans them. If you have a real thought in your head, if you're a free thinker, you're shadow banned or put into your little circle of friends. Boom, sidelined. And then what do they fill it in with? Zoe Quinn and Crash Override. And all of their input. And they just fill it in with the matrix. So hell yeah, they protected her. Hell yeah, the mainstream media protected Zoe Quinn and all her girls because that little guy had no idea who the hell he was dealing with. No idea in the world. He was dealing with the one little pole that could have brought the whole tent crashing down. Don't ever believe what you read on Twitter. Believe who you meet in person. Believe trustable facts. Because let me tell you, right now they have you believing in climate change when we're coming out of an ice age. There was 400 times more CO2 just 45 million years ago. From 1880 to 2013, the Earth has warmed 0.8 degrees. 0.8 and we've grown by six billion people. 
Why are they doing that? Why are they making such a big deal? Uh -huh. The Paris Climate Agreement was a hundred trillion American dollars of your money. To try and lower it, maybe by point zero 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 three percent, maybe in a couple decades. It's always about the money, honey. And Miss Zoe Quinn was the money. That's Gamergate. So let's get our facts straight. Wikipedia can go ahead and say it's about feminism. But it ain't nothing to do with feminism. That's just something they paid Wikipedia to tell y'all. But the thing I know about gamers, and the thing I know about people online is, they hate it just as much as us regular folks offline about being lied to. Right? Has nothing to do with our skin color. Has nothing to do with who we are. Gender, non-suspicious, non-binary, nothing. We humans hate being lied to. And that's one mother of a lie. As is Twitter. The biggest illusion of them all. So vote with us. Vote 2018 to clean out the GOP. No more incumbents.